all of the things we talked about when when I was, you know, your um, uh, on air co uh, coworker, um, all those things have happened and people don't either care or they didn't listen or what, whatever. It doesn't matter. Other things that we talked about and other things that we're now seeing are going to happen. The dollar is not going to last. So what 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 does the world look like? You know, we have two ways to go. We can either tear each other apart or we can see that world that Amazon uh, was talking about last night on Wasn't 60 that amazing? Minutes where, where yeah. literally the sky is the limit. Everything you know is about to change. When you, when you look at the this, this state of the economy, Obamacare the disaster, the rise uh, in the ever-growing government, deficits, debt, doubling of the people on welfare, what do you think in the privacy? I know you spend a lot of time reading and you're, you now have become a student of history. What do you think privately is going to happen to this country? I think, I think that we are um, in trouble. Yeah, and I think that we are in a situation that um, we will either rise to the occasion and be our best selves. I saw something that happened over the weekend, Sean, a poll that came out. I know you must have talked about it today. Seventy, what is it, 70 percent of Americans don't trust each other. They think only 30 percent of this country you can trust. If that remains true, will we then become Europe? We see signs that with the noblest of intentions, the Obama administration is in a kind of headlong retreat from the kind of global engagement that, in our view, offers the best hope for peace. Quick final thought from you, because you say openly in your essay that you're reserving judgment on all of this as we learn more over the next several weeks. But one of the things that you talk about in a broader perspective is global powers trying to rearrange themselves into a new global world order. What we're seeing is a kind of a concerted pushback by these three countries. I think we have to watch it carefully to see whether, in fact, this is the opening of a new moment in international history. Very interesting. Walters. Whether, in fact, this is the opening of a new moment in international history. New mystery surrounding one World Trade Center. For about a year, New Yorkers have reported hearing an eerie sound coming from the newly constructed building. They call it haunting, and it's got a lot of people talking. Rick Leventhal joins us now. So, Rick, you went down there. You did some investigative work. What did you learn? Well, there's clearly a noise. Uh, it's not clear exactly where it's coming from. It can create a sound that some are calling eerie, haunting, even moaning. The whistling was first reported by, uh, by a, the Tribe Tribeca citizen on the day after Thanksgiving. A man who lives a couple blocks from the almost completed One World Trade Tower wrote a local paper and said he first heard the sound during Hurricane Sandy last year and assumed it would be eliminated when the building's framework was finished and the windows installed. Well then, last week in the middle of the night, the neighbor says the tower began whistling again with a slightly different two-toned cry, calling it unmistakable and very chilling. So here it is, and you can judge for yourself. One of them is the mechanical mismatch between humans and electronics, right? So electronics are boxy and rigid, humans are curvy and soft. That's a mechanical mismatch problem. Well, a researcher at the University of Illinois, his name is Dr. Rogers, what he did is he founded a company and they started making electronic tattoos. So I, I'm wearing one here on my arm. Can we, do we have here. a camera to get a... This is a, develop, this is a developmental system made by MC10, and it has uh, an antenna and some sensors embedded in it. And what we plan to do is work with them to advance a tattoo that could be used for authentication. Now, it may be true that 10 to 20-year-olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo, if only to piss off their parents. That's something that you wear, but you could also imagine including authentication in just your daily habits. So I take a vitamin every morning. What if I could take vitamin authentication? What? Vitamin authentication. Look, I have one right here. Well, here, I'll let you hold it. <clears throat> Would you like to hold it? I'll hold it. Okay. <laughs> so this, you guys see it? this pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. And they power it up. And the switch goes on and off. 
and it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes your authentication token. Yes, this is true. Okay. Okay, but... Okay, so wait. So it's, uh, it's really true. So what this means is that that becomes my first superpower. I really want this superpower. It means that my arms are like wires, my hands are like alligator clips when I touch my phone, my computer, my door, my car, I'm authenticated in. First superpower. Like, I want that. This is FDA clear? So here's the thing. This, this is not science fiction. This pill was actually made by a company called Proteus. And they've developed it for medical applications. That pill has been CE stamped and cleared by the FDA. Does Asian Google now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because, <laughs> yeah. let's face it. If you have never heard of Bitcoin, you are probably not alone, but the online currency is gaining popularity around the world. And now, in eastern Kentucky, WIMT's Brittany Nana looked into the cyber money to try and answer some questions about how it works. City commissioner has to measure to pay its police chief in Bitcoin. It may be a forward-thinking movement, but many of you probably do not understand how it works. Bitcoin is a new currency traded against the dollar, yen, euro, and every other currency around the world. Israel is ready for historic peace. And it's a peace based on two states for two peoples. It's a piece that Israel can and must be able to defend itself by itself uh, with our own forces against any foreseeable threat. In the days and weeks ahead, uh, we will consult very closely and continually with our Israeli friends in order to bring about a comprehensive agreement that can withstand everybody's test. The FBI is rolling out a $1 billion facial recognition system. This high-tech program has been undergoing testing since February. It compiles mug shots, iris scans, and more, and is finally said to be ready for launch. You know, the FBI is now revealing its next generation, if you will, uh, effort to weed out the bad guys. As you mentioned, one billion dollars. They've put it to the test so far in several states since February. Now, the system works in two ways. It can compare an image to the FBI's massive database of mug shots to pinpoint criminals. It can also track suspects in surveillance footage by honing in on their faces in a crowd. There are those opposed to the idea, though, such as Democratic Senator Al Franken, who suggests the database raises serious privacy issues. Several public advocates are also wary of the project, fearing it will eventually extend beyond criminals to include images of the innocent. It is nationally implemented by the year 2014, John. Wow, fascinating. They may be looking at you. <laughs> Let's hope not. A new crime-fighting tool is so big, some might call it, a tank. Hey, I think they are. Now, it's really called an M-Rap. I checked on that. And tonight, these massive military vehicles are in the hands of four mid-state police agencies. A handful of police departments are now getting them free of charge to protect their officers. Andersonville SWAT team already has two Humvees. The problem is, they're not armored. The M-Rap gives them that much-needed protection. We plan to paint it black just the same as our other tactical vehicles and put police markings on it and that's probably all we're going to do. Sir, I want to talk to you. Do not arrest me. Right, sir. Go right there. He's under arrest. Stay right there. Back up, back up. Hey guys, if you cross this line, you'll be under arrest, so don't do it. This was, Amy, uh, a reporter being arrested by police who were dressed like stormtroopers out of, out of uh, a Steven Spielberg movie. Uh, what was your experience, what were your thoughts, and, and 
And how do you think that we got here from um, you know, 20, 30 years ago when this, this kind of thing was pretty much unheard of? You know, you had these police officers going after thousands of peaceful protesters, eviscerating the encampments, tear gassing, pepper spraying, beating uh, people in the streets. And this all has to uh, be reimagined. I mean, police have to be challenged. There are many good cops who don't feel that that's their role. Yeah, um, I, and it's I, our I job it. in the media to cover them. I, I, I think so. And, and, and Matthew, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, in the minute we have left, at what point in time did America start militarizing our police and why? Well, I, I don't think there's going to be anyone who can point to a specific you know, minute, but I think I a think lot of it has right to do with... the time the Dirty Harry movies came Well, I think out, a lot right? of it has to do with the fact that we started waging this crazy uh, war on drugs that encourages the militarization of police.